we still have to talk about the Grand Inquisitor. Now, this is, again, one of the most famous scenes in all of Dostoevsky's writing, probably in all of literature more generally, um, certainly in all of Russian literature. I've actually read from it a little bit before, so I'm going to just sort of summarize it because I can't read the whole thing. We don't have time to read the whole thing. Um, but let me uh, kind of try to lay out for you why this is something that uh, that Ivan feels compelled to add on before we get to the death, the death of Zosima and kind of the response that Dostoevsky levy. So um, it's a story that he tells about a poem that he's written. And it comes to us in this kind of, you know, half remembered uh, and coy way. Um, but the story is that during the Spanish Inquisition, right, which nobody expects, um, the Grand Inquisitor is confronted with the return of Christ. And it's not the second coming where he will come and glory and will, you know, strike down the sinners and so forth. It's just a kind of visit to give comfort and to give attention to the, you know, the poor sinners and to the people that he came to save. Um, and he walks among this just grim and gruesome perversion of the church that he founded, right? And he comes into conflict with the Grand Inquisitor as kind of the representative of all that man has done to seize divine truth out of the hands of God. Um, and this is one of the things, again, that is quite brilliant about Dostoevsky is that he's not just ragged on the socialists, right? He's indicating that socialism as a gesture is almost just the refinement and triumph of a thing that man's heart always wants to do, which is to stuff the truths of God into um, something more convenient uh, via bloodshed, right? The link between socialism and the Grand Inquisitor is not always understood, but I think it's this, right? It's the Procrustean bed of utopianism. Remember Procrustes, um, whom Theseus had to defeat, who kind of forces people into their uh, you know, into the bed that he wants them in. And that means he has to cut off their limbs or he has to stretch them out on the rack or something. Um, this effort to bind the truths of God, which is, which are, which conduce to the freedom of the human heart, right? That's what really drives the Grand Inquisitor insane and what he thinks men don't actually want, right? Um, in order to shut that down, he's had to create a system of rules. In order to enforce that system of rules, he's had to burn heretics at the stake. Um, and, and he can't bear to be encountered with um, you know, the God whom he has basically usurped. And he says, you gave us this church and we are taking it over. Um, and, and what we're going to do is we're going to give the people what they actually want, which is order, right? Order and, and earthly harmony, um, harmony where the Euclidean lines meet on this earth. Um, and what's again, brilliant is that you see, uh, the way in which that does kind of answer the desire for uh, justice in the here and now, just as socialism promises to do. Um, but it does so by shooting the general, right? It does so in a bloodbath, which will never ultimately end because sin will never ultimately end, um, which is what you have to deny in order to attempt any kind of utopian project, be it the grand, uh, be it the Spanish Inquisition or a socialist revolution.